Yeah, a rough stretch for basketball gets a little bit worse. Let's talk about it on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your daily stop for all your Badger news. Really do appreciate you tuning in. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. Today's episode brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things just a little bit further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Check them out today at NissanUSA.com. Uh, I am your host, Ryan Herrings. As I mentioned, I am still here. I have not entered the portal. I did have some I did have some podcasts reach out, kind of gauging the interest, right? Seeing if uh, maybe they could, could pry me out of here. But listen, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not entering the portal. Let's talk about it. AJ Store to the portal. Now, he had already announced he was testing the NBA waters. This just kind of felt like the next logical step. I don't think this one surprised many people. We kind of alluded to this a little bit on the show, but there's been a lot of smoke here. Uh, with AJ Store connected to a couple different places, the Big East schools, Illinois, which I talked about. Um, yeah, w- thoughts on this one. First of all, surprise factor, I'm not that surprised, right? Everybody who transfers in or out, you're always like, gosh, did this surprise us? Did it not? This one doesn't really surprise me. Keep in mind, this is kind of a track record for AJ Store. And I want to get into AJ Store for a second because I'm not here to, to disparage or bash him whatsoever. He was great at Wisconsin this year. This was a successful uh, player that Greg Gard picked up and it helped us in a lot of ways. But let's let's be real. This is this is AJ Store's seventh school in seven years, right? He, he had a different high school every year of his high school career. Last year he was at St. John. This year Wisconsin, St. John's. This year Wisconsin, and next year it's going to not be Wisconsin. So he does have a bit of a track record of looking for the next place, next landing spot for him. Um, and then it felt like down the stretch there was smoke. Um, He had the incident where he kissed the floor and he said that was about Tyler Wall. It's felt like this has been coming. So from a surprise standpoint, I'm not surprised about this one. Impact? Yeah, this matters. Like AJ Store scored 16.8 per game this year. Um, Got to the line over eight times a game. Shot over 30% from three. Durable, right? You need players that play. AJ Store started 36 games. Gave you over 1,000 minutes last year. Like those are things that need to be replaced. Um, In baseball parlance, 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 parlance. He was an innings eater. Like he he ate up a lot of minutes, um, gave the team athleticism on the wing, gave the team ability in transition, gave the team another shooter, gave the team um, this. I think this is an important aspect of AJ's game that goes under talked about. <clears throat> he was a guy that forced the other team to put their pest perimeter defender, pest perimeter defender on him. Right. So that made it easier on the perimeter for guys like Max Klesman. It, it made it easier on the perimeter for guys like Chucky Eppern because he soaked up defensive attention. That, that's gone. That's going to need to be replaced. Um, I would say I think there's elements of his game that hurt the Badgers as well. Again, I, this is not to disparage AJ whatsoever. I wish him success. I, I don't root against kids. Uh, they're not even kids, but I hope he does well. I hope he goes and crushes it. I have nothing but ill will, like, or nothing but goodwill. Go do whatever is best for you, man. Like, that's what the portal's here for. You're taking advantage of it. Uh, he's he's going to be getting a pay bump. Like, it's all good, but defensively, there are issues with AJ's game that hurt us this year, right? So when you look at, I think there's a chance Badger fans have used his offensive ability and what he's brought offensively, and they've kind of let it overshadow some of the issues uh, defensively that he also had. There's a reason you saw Klesman and those guys guarding Damask, right? Chucky Hepburn guarding Shannon, uh, Hepburn and Klesman, Klesman guarding Edwards, right? It's because... We couldn't put store on those guys necessarily. And I think that hurt us defensively. I think it made it harder on the perimeter for our other perimeter defenders. Um, I think there's a good chance that whoever you're bringing in to fill AJ store spot, I think there's a good chance defensively it gets better for the Badgers. Um, There's also a good chance offensively. It takes a step back, right? Like he, he does things offensively that this team is going to need to either replace or they're going to have to adapt and overcome. So in that sense, it's a big loss, but defensively, like, I don't think it's a pure coincidence, and this is not all on AJ. I'm going to be super clear. But I don't think it's also a pure coincidence that AJ came in and this team was the worst defensive team we've had in 20 years. Like, we have to be better defensively next year. And I think there's a pretty good chance that we are going to be better defensively as we replace AJ Store. So, yeah, AJ Store to the portal again. This team is better with him. I wish we could have kept him. We're going to have to replace things that are very hard to replace, like a volume score on the wing with that type of athleticism who can get to the paint and shoot 80% from the line. 
that's not easy to find. And it's not on the roster currently. This is not one of those cases where you look on the roster and you say internal development, who could, who could develop um, from the freshman sophomore class that can take, take some of what age store was doing. I don't think there's an internal option here. So you got to go to the portal to find a replacement here. It's going to be hard to find. I just want to point out that I don't think it's fully irreplaceable because there are areas of AJ Store's game from offensive inefficiency at times to turnovers to defensive inefficiency that I think hurt the Badgers. So guard's going to have to replace it. I This is not shocking. It is a bummer. Um, all right, let's talk Gus, Gus Yaldin also to the portal. Announced today, Gus Yaldin, as uh, everydayers who watch this show know, I uh, predicted would be our big man off the bench this year to back up Stephen Crow. I predicted he was the reason you wouldn't necessarily need to get a five in the transfer portal last year. I like his game. And much like AJ Store, I want to start off with there's nothing petty about this for me. I hope he does well wherever he goes. I have, I, I, that, I, cause I root for success for people. I really do. Um, and in a lot of these cases, I think it can be win win. You know, the Badgers are getting another scholarship here, right? They're they're going to get that scholarship back. If for whatever reason it, it's not working for Gus Yaldin, then he can go somewhere where it works better for him and the Badgers can make use of that scholarship. And I hope he does well. I hope he finds success. I still think he's really talented. I think he's a really talented kid that for a couple reasons just couldn't get it, couldn't get the, the training car. It got derailed a little bit this year and he couldn't quite get it back on the rails. Um, but yeah, Gus Yaldin to the portal, AJ Store to the portal um combined we lose 16.8 points per game i it's another hole for greg guard to have to fix and you start to look at this roster now what do we have to address in the portal i i feel and this this might not be done by the way chucky hepburn there, there's there's some places that he could go um that's been reported it's out there there's and this isn't by the way that that's not even surprising like every year teams reach out to other players like uh hepburn could have gone places last year so there's there's places this this the dust hasn't fully settled yet, but if you look at the roster, I am I do think um, Chucky Epper will be back. I, I maybe that's just hopeful thinking. I think he's a big part of this. I, I really like his game. I, I hope that we're able to retain Chucky Epper. Um, if so, what what do you need in the portal now? Now you need to replace two starters. You need to replace Wall, and you need to replace Store. So what did they give you that you have to find, right? You have to find volume scoring. You have to find a wing that can score, that can get into the paint a little bit. That's that store. And you need to find someone with some size, toughness, defensive versatility. I think if you can find some shooting at the four uh, to place wall. So it's a lot because I also think you could use another wing and another post player. So there's a lot for guard here to have to replace. We're going to get into uh, one of the targets later in the show that is coming to campus. I think could be a big part of this, but it can't be the only piece. He's going to have to go out and get several pieces to replace these players. I do think, and I was talking to Scary Alvarez about this. I made the point. Uh, I do think that they're going to get better in some areas with people they bring in. They're going to bring players in. And here's what I want to tell everybody. Take a breath. Everybody take a breath. <sighs> like this off season is not done. Before we freak out and, and we lose our minds, we lost store, we lost Yaldin. Uh, Badger's going to bring some players in too. Like this is the portal's going to give it and it's going to take it, right? Right now, we've seen a couple of people leave. The Badgers are going to bring some guys in and new guys are always kind of exciting. Some of these guys are going to help the Badgers in ways that some of the departing players did not. So, I don't don't get too crazy yet. Let's see what Greg Guard does in the portal. For everybody that's really freaked about AJ Store leaving, how's Guard going to replace him? Greg Guard got AJ Store in last year's portal, right? So, like he has a track record at least over the last couple of years of finding some interesting pieces in the portal. You think back to Max Klesman, that was a portal addition. That's a really good one, right? Chris Vogt was a good portal addition as a backup five. Um, Micah Potter's a guy he got uh, as a transfer. That was kind of before this era of the NIL and the transfer portal. But Micah Potter was a, a five that he got from Ohio State that worked out really well. Um, obviously, AJ Store worked out really well. Kamari McGee has turned into a good backup point guard, also a portal addition. So Greg Guard has done pretty well in the portal, right? So I think we need to take a breath. Let's see what happens. AJ Store is a real loss. I'm not here to minimize that. I'm not here to sugarcoat it. Offensively, there's elements of his game that are going to be really hard to replace. I think defensively, it's a little different story, and the Badgers couldn't even improve in that aspect. But that's a big hole to fix in the offensive lineup. And like I said, his his presence made it easier on the other perimeter guys to score. His presence made it easier on Hepburn and Klesman. They're going to have to find somebody else so defenses can't load up on those two next year. So big offseason for Greg Gard. Don't freak out too much yet. Let's see what he does in the portal before we judge this thing. All right, we're going to take a quick break for our friends of the show. Come back. Um, 
Talk a little bit about what Chris McIntosh had to say about great guard. Is it controversial? Um, is it kind of the writing on the wall? We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show. And listen, I've talked about it. If if you own a home, sometimes you, you just got to go out there. You got to you got to clean up some of the hedges. You got to get back into the wild spots. And I did it when we first moved to this home. I had a machete and I was back there and I was hacking away brush and I was getting cut up and it was miserable and I was bleeding and it was terrible. Listen, if you got to do a little landscaping, don't get the machete out. Get the get the Manscaped Lawnmower 5.0 with the code locked on at manscaped.com. You get 20% off, 20 off this bad boy and free shipping. Again, this thing is compact, it's powerful. The Lawnmower 5.0 is waterproof. If you want to do that in the shower, if you want to do it out in the streams of Montana with the salmon and the grizzly bears, whatever it is, you can take that Lawnmower 5.0, take that bad boy out, and take care of all of your landscaping business. Right now, get 20% off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning down in the pants. Today's episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at Better Together. Again, this is something I've talked about a lot. I'm really excited about this one because we do so many things together, right? We we go to the bar with our buddies together. We play darts together. We play uh, Sega together, right? We we get on the we get on the the motorcycle together. Daily fantasy should be done together. Go check out Daily Fantasy cooperatively, community based Daily Fantasy over at Better Together. Um, this allows you to create that shared experience. You can team up with somebody instead of the same old same old Daily Fantasy grind. You can team up with somebody, have a sense of camaraderie, enhance the experience, um, team up and, and help your, your group of friends, friends climb up the leaderboard together over at Better Together. Right now, download Better Together from the App Store. Sign up using promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code Locked On because winning alone is fun, but it is better together. All right, let, let's keep going here because this is a loaded basketball thing. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, I thought it was interesting. So uh, to Badger Extra, uh, Chris McIntosh talked a little bit about Greg Guard, the future of the program. I know, listen, this has been a wildfire speculation. Should Greg Guard be fired? Should he stay? What should the expectations be? I pretty consistently said, I don't think Greg Guard should be fired. And I know that's not the most popular take. I, I get it. Um, and and I'm if you have a different perspective, that's totally cool too. Like, I'm not here to tell anybody your perspective is wrong. I'm not here to tell you mine is right. I'm just telling you here to tell you what my opinion is, right? And I hope this doesn't become like the, the Paul Chris discussion. I think it already sort of is where you, we're just going to rail against people who think differently on this. At the end of the day, we're all Badger fans. And we all want this program to be incredible. Um, I mean, I that that's it. Like, that's the goal. And I don't know if any of us know the perfect solution there. there. There's pitfalls. There's potential upsides and downsides to each solution here. But the person that whose opinion really matters is Chris McIntosh. It certainly isn't mine. Um, it's Chris McIntosh, Wisconsin Athletic Director. He had this to say about Greg Gard to Jim Polsey, and he said, I think Greg puts us in the best position to be successful into the future, McIntosh said. I think Gard has a great understanding of what's needed in the continued evaluation of our, our evaluation of our program to get there. It's a program that's been evolving with the times that we live in. And I'm excited about some of the things that he and I talked about for the future and the evolution of our program. I mean, essentially, it's kind of what I, I've said before. He's not getting fired after this year. Now, the the confidence quote from an athletic director is sometimes referred to as the kiss of death, because it, if you have to speak um about your head coach and say, I'm confident in him. I, to, to put it another way, you, you've never heard Alabama's athletic director say, yeah, I'm really confident in Nick Saban, right? The, if the results speak for themselves, the athletic director doesn't have to say anything. In other words, however, I, I don't think Greg Artis or Chris McIntosh is completely off base on this. You know, people get very frustrated with Greg Gard and the, the perceived inability to adapt. Greg Gard has adapted. Yeah, people for the longest time said you're not going to get athletes under Greg Guard. He just got AJ Storm in the portal last year. You know, people have said Greg Guard's not going to succeed in the NIL era. I mean, you can't you can't get a, an AJ Storm if you're not in playing in that 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 sandbox. At least I think you know people have said Greg Guard needs to focus more on offense. That's what this year was. This year was a complete focus on offense. Right? Could we play a little defense, please? Um, so I, I think you know Chris McIntosh hit on something there where he said. 
I've, I've seen this program evolve a little bit already and we're living in an evolving landscape. I've seen it already start to evolve. I think great guard has evolved to some degree. Now it needs to keep getting better. Um, it needs to continue adapting. I, I think it's kind of a moving target at times, right? You fix the offense and now the defense isn't very good. And now you got to go to the portal and you just lost an offensive guy. Can we get the defense better? Is that going to hurt the offense? Those are all good questions, but he's not going anywhere, at least at least in the interim basis, in the short term. He's going to be here next year. I think he's probably got a couple years unless the, the bottom really falls out. And that's not just my opinion. That's that's kind of based on things I've heard, things that people have talked to. I think I don't think there's a huge sense of urgency in the athletic department to move on from Gary Gard. I, I've said this before. I don't think Chris McIntosh feels the same sense of urgency as a lot of fans do. And you can, you can hate that or love it. I'm just telling you what I believe. That's not even my opinion. That's that's kind of what I believe. I don't think the urgency to make a change I, is quite as fevered as it is among the fan base. And I think there's reasons for that, right? Um, coming into this year, they wanted this program to get better. You got to make the, the dance. You got to make the tournament. He did that. Does he have to get better there? Yes, he does. Absolutely. Um, but the team got better. And we're going to see what it does again next year. So, I, I know that's frustrating for a lot of Badger fans, and I understand that frustration. Like, you have to get into the second weekend at some point. Greg Gard has not done that in a while. That's not that's not good enough. But he's not the only coach that hasn't done that. When you look around the landscape of college basketball, there's a lot of programs. And, again, I know people don't want to hear this, but I'm just telling you, there's a lot of programs that would really like to be a five seed. If you're a five seed, you're in the, what, top 30-ish programs of the country? top 35 ish. I mean, I don't, it's not a perfect representation, but that means you're in the top 10 percentile of college basketball. Just, just for reference. Um, you're not going to fire a guy after he got a five seed, right? Um, you're not going to fire a guy a year after the NIT where he improves the team the next year to a five seed. You're just not. And the other thing with Greg Gard, and I know people, so to some people, this not, might not matter at all, but I'm telling you, it, it matters to the school. It matters to the administration. He brings in generally good kids. Um, he, he doesn't embarrass the program and he wins at a pretty high clip. Like it's not the easiest decision just to move on from that guy. Whether, whether people agree or not, I'm not here to tell you you're wrong or I'm right. I'm just here to tell you it's not as easy to move on from that guy. I think as people think it might be, uh, he's been pretty consistently successful and he runs a pretty clean program and he brings in pretty good kids and he just got the fifth seed. Um, and yes, he also just got his, his Breaks beat off a little bit by a JMU team. That was a 12th seed. Like that's not good. And it's not good enough. But I don't think there, I don't think there was ever a serious consideration to move on from him after this year. After after kind of the way the team improved, after his ability to land AJ store. Now, this offseason is super critical for him because it me saying I don't think there's a huge push to move on from him. I don't also don't think the ice is incredibly thick right now. Like you have to have another good year next year. You have to. And this off season is going to be the, the mortar that you build that season upon. So what do you do in the portal? You, you can't strike out. You have to land two or three guys this off season. And you have to land two or three guys that are contributors that are significant players that can be in your eight man rotation, because who's in your eight man rotation right now, right? So let's just say hypothetically lose nobody else. So you have Hepburn, Klesman, Crow Blackwell, that's four. Winter, that's five. I think you're counting on, I broke my finger, by the way. Klesman, that's six. Um, by the way, if you're listening on audio, the reason I said that is I held my finger up as I'm counting. So that's six. You need two more. You need at least two more in the portal. Two more significant contributors. And then if you can do that, that's not a bad top eight. It really isn't. So huge offseason for Greg Gard. Chris McIntosh reaffirmed his confidence, which always doesn't always mean quite as much as it sounds, but it, it's not a nothing burger. Um, all right, we're going to take a quick break for our friends on the show. Come back and talk about a big-time basketball prospect. That could be one of those guys that helps Greg Gard win this offseason. We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badge. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at Nissan. Listen, if you're the kind of person that likes to push things just a little bit further, like you like to find that next adventure around the bend, uh, ever wonder what could be around the next corner, that's why you have to get in one of these new 2024 Nissan SUVs. And they have an incredible lineup with capabilities that can take your adventure to the next level. Right now, over at NissanUSA.com, check out the Rogue, the Pathfinder, or the Armada. This, this week's Armada is the Yukon Huskies. 
powerful, big, luxurious, a monster. Those Huskies can go anywhere just like the uh, Nissan 2024 Armada can take you and your family on that next big adventure. The Armada, um, everything you expect from a full-size SUV, rugged 4x4, can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury. Tow bigger and explore further with the 2024 Armada. Take the Rogue, the Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. That's ShopNissanUSA.com. ShopNissanUSA.com. All right, let, let's talk about a significant target here that the Badgers are in on. Uh, Frankie Fiddler. So we mentioned huge offseason for the Badgers, huge offseason for Greg Guard. There are empty chambers in the bullet or in the gun right now, and you got to put some bullets back in that sucker. Um, Frankie Fiddler. Coming out of Ohio, uh, power forward, 6'7". So he's kind of like a small forward power forward. He's not as big as Wall. He's probably ideally more of a three. So maybe this is your AJ Store um, replacement. He's a guy who played with Chucky Hepburn in high school. And uh, last year at Omaha, averaged 20.1 points per game, 6.3 rebounds, 2.6 assists, shot 35% from three. Think of a skilled, athletic, versatile offensive player. Uh, not the greatest athlete. But a really good shooter, get to the rim, a good ball handler, a pretty good passer too. He's a significant player. This is this is a really really solid player. Improved dramatically at Ohio or at Oma, um in his three years there. Has a really good connection with Chucky Hepburn. This is a guy that can. I mean, not only can he slot into the starting lineup and give you a little something of what you didn't have last year. I'm going to get into that for a, in a second. But he also is a guy that can kind of help solidify. Chucky Hepburn stain because the two have a really good relationship dating back uh, to their high school playing days. So bringing him in and signing him, I think it would be a sign that Chucky Hepburn would also be staying, which I think is great. So I talked a little bit about what, what can Frankie Fiddler bring maybe that this team was missing last year. I think he can bring a more consistent shooter, right? AJ store bouts of inconsistency, Tyler wall. We all know the shooting issues there. I think Fiddler could come in next year and on volume be about the best shooter you have on the roster which is a huge, which which at times has really hurt us with this year, has really hurt Wisconsin. A lot of games where we've been inconsistent from three. I think Fiddler gives you more consistency from that spot. Um, he replaces to some degree AJ Store's ability to get to the free throw line. He got there a lot last year. And when he got there, he shot 85% from the line. So you're bringing in a guy who can provide really high-level consistent shooting, in my opinion, with good size. He's 6'7". Um, pretty good ball handler. Not, not a great elite ball handler. Not a great elite um athlete or offensive weapon but somebody who has played a lot of ball hit score at all three levels consistent three-point shooter can get to the line and can knock him down when he gets there um defensively I, look i think a lot of people are worried about you lose aj store you lose athleticism defensively aj store's athleticism didn't play up last year like that it, it was like a, a pitcher with a really with a 98 mile an hour fastball but he couldn't locate it so it didn't really help that was kind of AJ Store's athleticism on defense. He he couldn't really utilize it, or he didn't really utilize it, so it didn't really help. So I think defensively, you're getting kind of a thicker guy who's played a lot of ball. I you're probably going to take a bit of a step up defensively. I, I it just is what it is. AJ Store was not a great defender last year. Now I I still think you got to find a four. I think you need more toughness on the inside to help uh, uh, Stephen Crowell and to replace Tyler Wall defensively. But I think. I think Fiddler probably steps in as a number three or as, as your, your small forward to, to replace AJ store. And then you roll out Hepburn, Klesmit, Fiddler as your one, two, three, uh, three really experienced players, a lot of shooting there. I like it. Fiddler would be a really nice fit and a really nice addition to the Badgers. And I'd be really excited to see how he play in that offensive ecosystem. Um, and you start to continue to surround Stephen Crowell with shooting. I think ideally then if you can go find a four to replace Tyler wall that can shoot and play defense, that team could be fun bringing in free tag and still having Blackwell. That team could be a lot of fun next year. So yeah, we're going to track that Frankie Fiddler should be coming on campus this weekend. There's a lot of schools after him. Nebraska's after him as well. Um, so that's not going to be an easy battle to win, but it sounds like Wisconsin's in a good spot there to land the very skilled and talented um, junior out of Omaha. We'll see how that goes. it will be a big part towards helping Greg guard kind of reload this off season. And that's what every, that's what every off season is going to be like. Right? You're going to lose guys and you're going to gain guys. That's the it's the new normal. So anyway, AJ Store gone, Gus Yaldin gone, maybe Frankie Fiddler coming. And Chris McIntosh endorses Greg Gard. It is a lot today on Locked On Badgers Basketball Edition. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. As always, really, really do appreciate y'all on Wisconsin. And we'll talk later.